Hi, my name's Dave Flynn, and thanks for watching my bass collection. Today we're looking at the Squire HM Series 5 string bass. Now, this came at a time at around 1989 where Fender were already producing uh, Squire instruments in Japan. Um, and they've been doing that now for about five or six years. Um, and up until this point in time, they were producing uh, just uh, lower end versions of their uh, American uh, American instruments, so strats, tellies, precision basses, jazz basses, the usual kind of line, rather like Gibson and Epiphone. Um, in 1989 though, Fender have now, um, now moved production um, across to Korea, um, and in space into launch that phase, um, they've also um, developed um, a Squire only line of instruments, which is hence the HM series. Uh, if you've ever seen one, um, the guitars are kind of like a Strat-like version um, with a variety of um, pickup um, configurations and they produced this five string bass. I'm not aware of anything that I've seen or uh, seen or read that they actually produced a four string version of this instrument and that's probably interesting in itself that that never happened. What defines the difference between sort of HM series um, and any other sort of Fender um, is this weird angular headstock. You can see that. So if you ever see an instrument with that, it says Squire with that sort of headstock, chances are it's a HM series. And it kind of flies, I suppose, in the face of the traditional Fender uh, wave or scroll headstock that you would normally see on sort of the P bass or uh, jazz bass. Um, the other thing, the other interesting thing is the, the combination of sort of the three um, tuners along the top, two at the bottom, which is kind of more, uh, more reminiscent, I suppose, of um, Music Man or something along those kind of lines. It certainly, I suppose, I guess was to compete against at the time um, those heavy metal considered instruments such as Jackson or Chevelle. Um, in terms of the instrument itself, well, it's a maple neck, uh, rosewood fingerboard, um, bolt-on neck, oh, show you that, bolt-on neck. Um, the, the body, well the body, I'm not sure what it's made out of, the finish is really good, so it disguised it really well, but everything I've read, and certainly if I feel the weight of it, tends to make me think it's ply or some kind of composite material like that. Um, in terms of the pickups, well, the pickups are quite weak. Um, I'll show you those there. On first inspection, just looking at it, um, you could be excused for thinking that they were kind of like something like EMGs or something along those kind of lines. Uh, they're certainly not. They were. They certainly uh, are different to what Fender were putting into their uh, or Squire were putting into their to, to their P bases and jazz bases at the time, which were the sort of like the standard pickups with the um, exposed pole pieces, um, and certainly different. Um, in terms of the um, uh, EQing arrangement, well, it's typical for any sort of passive instrument. It's a um, uh, two volume, one tone. Um, the tailpiece, well, the tailpiece is actually quite high quality, um, and um, I think it's actually probably of a, of a better standard than you'd probably expect for uh, of instruments of this kind of like of this quality or um, uh, at the price at the time. Um, what I've I've sort of found in the past uh, with this is that sort of techies and and uh, sound guys tend to think on first in, first look it looks like a, a um, uh, an active instrument. And I guess that's what it was. That that's kind of part of the the problem with this, with this instrument. It's a lot of show, um, um, but doesn't quite have come across the same way. When I bought this instrument, I was comparing it with thing, with instruments such as Samic and um, um, and Ibanez. What I liked about this instrument, and not knowing the 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 HM kind of uh, status that it was supposed to have. I just saw it as a sort of a, a, a I just sort of like the white on black kind of look, and I like the tone of the instrument, which has kind of quite a woody tone. If I wind back the um, the P pickup and sort of play more here on the 
um, on the J, you get quite a quite a funky tone. <laughs> And I really like that kind of thing, and it's kind of versatile in, in using it for a lot of um, uh, a lot of stuff. Um, if you wind back up up the the P pickup, play more up here on the wood, you can almost get a kind of a more a very woody kind of almost jazz like tone to it. I hope you could, that sort of came across. Um, Cross there, but it's it, yeah, it's such a, a more a, a more mellow sort of sound to it, and that's what I really liked about it was the versatility. Um, I can sort of go from playing playing sort of poppy kind of stuff and and, and funky kind of stuff in one in one uh, in one um, session, and move to play kind of more sort of jazzy kind of stuff, um, and have those sort of two tones at my at, at my disposal. That's kind of what I really liked about it, and I suppose that's the the problem with this instrument. If it is sort of produced or produced as a hate, as a heavy metal instrument, then the expectation I, I kind of think would be sort of a more ballsy, in-your-face sort of loud kind of sound. Um, it's certainly not like that at all. It's very sort of very sort of light, mellow passive kind of instrument. The other thing I should mention is the fifth string on this as well. The fifth string really is for show, I, I kind of think these days, so I'm quite convinced of that. The pickups certainly don't complement it, um, and they're not, they were never designed for for um, for the fifth string. And certainly, even though I can I play it here, it actually doesn't sound too bad, and I'm just plugged directly DI straight into my laptop as so I'm doing that. That doesn't sound too bad, but um, live it's just very flabby, and tone-wise, there's just nothing there at all. If you are looking to mod this, um, um, then I, uh, my thoughts would be, the thing that you would want to do is really change the pickups first. Whether or not you change them for just just for a, a set of better passive pickups like um, uh, Damasios or Seymour Duncan's, or whether or not you sort of go to the next step and, and drop in. Uh, a set of active ones like EMGs or uh, something along those kind of lines. That probably would would really um, give this a lot. This would probably give it a lot of steroid that that it probably needs to give that sort of heavy metal credential. Um, I have seen a couple of instruments that have been modded with um, uh, with better pickups, um, and certainly that does make a difference. That has made a difference to it. But for me, because of the, uh, I suppose, because the, the the instrument does have such a low output, it's great for um, uh, for gigs and small rooms where volume is an issue. But I can still take my rig and set it up the way I like it, and just play it at a lower volume. Um, and that's what I kind of really enjoy about this instrument. Um, I actually think it's a fun instrument to play. I, I almost consider it as a four string. I tend not to worry about the, five, the fifth string on this very much at all. Um, and if you take away the fifth string and take away that HM sort of label that it has, then it actually is quite a good four string bass. If you're looking at buying one at the moment, you're probably looking at somewhere between about three to five hundred dollars, depending on on quality and condition of, of the instrument. Um, that's a five hundred Australian, so you kind of work that out yourself in in, in your own currency. Um, I recommend taking a look at it. Um, certainly, it's it's rarer now. It's harder to find uh, one of these one of these instruments, um, particularly in Australia, but. Um, Depending where you are in the world, you might you, you might have better luck. Um, but yeah, they're rarer and harder to find. The last thing I will say about it, they only produced them for uh, these instruments for about two or three years and then stopped production um, of the HM series altogether. And since then, Fender have just gone back to producing um, um, their... Uh, their, their instruments under the Squire label, just as uh, just as they normally had done in the past. Um, so I hope that gives you uh, uh, just a, uh, an insight and just a, a bit of a critique. Um, I hope that was helpful to, to some of you out there. Have a look for some of my more some some more of my bass collection. Um, there's at the moment there's about uh, six or seven in the series, um, and so I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Have a good day.